Hey Fearless Gamers, James from Fearless Games here, and this is another little segment, I guess, of Wildcard um, Basin Clinic, if you want to think of it that way. And I went over in a previous video why I feel basing your models is important, and I went over some different sizes of bases, different shapes of bases, and different basing, different bases in terms of resin casts versus regular bases and all that. And what I'm going to go over here is materials you can use to make your base. And, or bases. And the reason I'm going over that is because if you don't utilize resin cast bases, you got to make up your bases as you go. And hopefully the idea is, um, through these videos that you'll, if you look at basing now as kind of a chore and a task you really don't want to do, hopefully that thought process will change through these videos because basing, um, like I said, uh, probably before is, I know I shouldn't say probably, definitely before, in the other video is a, an important part of um, getting your models finished. And looking at it like a chore kind of hampers, you know, progress with it a little bit. So what we have here is materials. You don't need all of these. These are just examples of some materials you can utilize uh, for getting your models based. Now, I broke it down into two categories I have to talk about. Uh, the first category is going to be your foundation, uh, your groundwork, if you will. And then the second category I'll talk about um, is your accent pieces that you don't really need for the base, but it really helps make the base pop, especially going for a certain feel. Now, um, as far as foundation goes, you can either go with the plastic card route, this is textured to be like deck plating, and that is basically you glue it down onto your base, the appropriate shape for your base, and cut it out, and um, just paint it up and you're done. Or you can use it as part of um, the base, you know, as an accent piece to represent like a ruined uh, rubble of a building or something like that. But if you utilize it as the actual whole thing of the base, you can pretty much move on to painting it up and adding accent pieces as you go to it. If you don't do that, you're going to need um, modeling sand or modeling flock um, and before I move on from that I want to say flock it's green in color all the modeling flock I've seen has been green in color and they've all been pretty much the same size particles in the uh, in the little uh, in, in the casing so like this if it's if we're just gonna call it green sand right now um, it's not actually sand I don't think I think it's made up of a different material but you know, it looks and kind of acts like sand a little bit. And uh, it's all the same particle size, so you get a very uniform coating on your base, which works great, and especially when you add accent, uh, accent pieces on top of that. The reason why some people go and get different size, you know, different coarse or fine uh, grade sand and mix it together, you know, mix coarse and fine together, or mix coarse with the modeling flock, or whatever you do, is because people like to have the different... Um, like coarse and fine mixed together to give a more random looking effect and give kind of a more realistic looking effect especially if they're going for an ashen waste or a desert waste or a, a, a heavy rubble type of environment so you can utilize flock by itself no problem you can utilize modeling sand by itself no problem but people like to mix and match together to get more of a randomized occurrence on their bases you can also utilize kitty litter and if you happen to have a cat, well then you probably have some kitty litter that you can steal from. If you don't have a cat, you can buy a bag of kitty litter and be set for life in terms of basing your models. Another route you could go to add some depth, what I call three-dimensional depth, to the base. Um, I guess I don't need to call it three-dimensional depth, but I do to kind of signify from a different uh, feel of depth you get from just using different uh, sizes of grains is spackling paste or something like it. And with that, what you do is you apply it to your base and it'll dry over time. Uh, it usually takes a couple of hours. With the spackling paste, it's sandable in case you want to sand it down if you put too much of it on. Um, also, while it's still wet, you can put modeling sand or modeling flock down on it. And what that helps you do is it gives you a bit of thickness to the base and you can uh, spread it and as you want, take a bit of it away to give you kind of a more of a realistic feel to a cracked up ashen wasteland or a cracked up urban rubble environment 
where the ground isn't always going to be level. Uh, you can utilize it by itself as well, just put the spiral clean paste down there, let it dry uh, as you want, maybe add some bits of rock or whatever to give more of a, a rocky feel. You can paint it up like a like a, a rocky feel or something like that. And those are just some of your foundations that you can utilize. Moving on to accent pieces, accent pieces are things like static grass, clumps of foliage. Um, these little pieces of a uh, of uh, simulated concrete snow all well, snow effects not real snow um some of these you have to put on while you're making up the base before you paint it and some of these you have to put on after you're done with your base and it's fully painted so let's go over the ones you can put down first uh, you can put down bits of pebbles and cork you can put down the uh, concrete you can put down uh your sprue or extra bits first because you have to paint those up anyway so you can put them down as you're as you're assembling the base and getting it ready for painting things like clumped foliage static grass and snow effects yeah you have to put down once the base is fully painted because you don't want to accidentally paint over those details so um extra bits you can utilize to represent like a ripped off arm from the enemy or you can use that same arm extra arm piece paint up um, in stone colors and looks like a piece of a statue you, you can take a hobby knife to it cut off a bit to make it look like a broken off and there you go you got a statue piece on your base to further um, make the base kind of come to life with the sprue you can cut it up to look like pieces of metal uh, from buildings or metal rails you can even cut up to and stack them to make it look like gold bars or ingots um, to kind of give an accent that way I mentioned plastic card on the foundation. Plastic card also comes in two big and different shapes like that. One of them looks like an I-beam. So you can take that, cut it up, and use it to represent like a building's I-beam on your base. All of those you have to paint up as well. Same thing with the concrete to look like either a piece of rubble is standing on or look like a piece of broken wall standing straight up. Um, the static grass and the clump foliage and the snow is something you add to bases once the base is fully painted and these items you can add to a resin base as well to give it a bit of uh, more realism to it if you got let's say overgrown rubble or ruins or overgrown cobblestones or whatever it is you can add some static grass for clump foliage or if you want it to be snowy you can add some snow effects to it as far as snow there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do snow regardless of how you do it you're going to want to add it to your base after you're done painting up your base so you don't get any paint in the snow unless you're looking for a bloody snow or whatever and um, those are really the two things your foundations which you can just use your foundations not add any accents just paint it up and it'll look just fine uh, I do that with some of my bases just to add more randomness not everything's gonna have you know super cool accents on it or um, conversely you can go crazy with the accents. Just gotta be careful if you're utilizing grass or clone foliage. Um, one thing to keep in mind is also footing for your model when you're util utilizing these things. You want your model to have an, a natural footing so it doesn't look like it's standing unnaturally on like a random small bit of, um, of your base. You want it to look like you can actually stand there just to give it more realism. And lastly, everything I just said here, as far as materials you can use, can also be utilized for dioramas, display boards, and pieces of terrain, which is why I have this here. I would utilize these bits, this bit of pebble and cor uh, crushed cork, ripped up cork, uh, as well as buying big bags of sand if I wanted to, um, for making terrain or display boards. Instead of buying it in this size, Yes, both will work, but the bigger you buy it from the art supply stores, uh, the cheaper it'll be overall for you. Uh, you know, you can get something that, for the price of this, or really this, you can get something three times the size. So, it's just something to keep in mind if you're going to do a lot of large-scale display or terrain pieces. Anyways, that's it for this video installment of, um, of on bases. And... Um, if you have any questions, any comments, or criticisms, concerns, whatever it may be, feel free to leave them in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you here at Fearless Games. And uh, we'll try to answer it 
best we can back as a comment and uh, if necessary just answer it easier I'll do a video to answer a question if it's necessary um, so that's it for now and until next time fearless gamers take it easy